Hello, here I am having a, a well-deserved sit-down. Um, probably the, the question I'm asked most often is about learning on your own. Um, is it possible? How do you do it? Um, if you've come to the point of asking that question, you've probably done some research and found that there's this kind of monolithic orthodoxy um, of, of which the, the representatives um, uh, those people who are kind of posting on social media, which I suppose is where most people will do their research, um, this monolithic orthodoxy will tend to say, you know, like you absolutely must train with a teacher. And they really emphasise this kind of lineage and generations and one-on-one -on -one transmission, what's going on, um, as, as the most important thing and that, that you can't possibly learn each one in any other way. And um, have, Having seen some of the the interactions, you know, I've, been, I've had some interactions with these people myself and I've also seen where beginners have been talking about these ideas, um, <coughs> asking these questions and... Hey! Shh. It sees a line going on there. Um, actually getting responses that have been quite obnoxious and unhelpful, so I'll come back to that in, in a bit. So if you are kind enough to watch my videos, then you know that I think about all of these things in a completely different way. Um, so I'm going to say the reverse is true. The reverse is true to what these, um, what this monolithic orthodoxy says. So number one, you're in a much better position learning on your own. Um, f for me, most of those people who who say that you know that you must train with train with a teacher, I wouldn't let them train my dog. Is the reality? Um, what what have they actually got to show for? Um, their orthodoxies, their lineages, their certificates, and we can talk about all of those things. Um, they're far more concerned with that. This, this is the empirical reality that, that you can just go and you can look and you can read. I mean, you can go yourself and read and just check on the internet and just read these people talking about theory. Um, well, they don't really talk that much about theory. They talk about pseudo theory. Theory is very important. You know, I'm not one of these people who says, you know, I like, just practice, don't worry about theory. That contradicts the direct teaching of Wang Shenzhai and Yao Zongzun, who both emphasise the importance of theory to contextualise your practical training. They're not even interested in theory, they're just interested in... They're, they're not interested in, in genuine, genuine theory as such, and uh, they're mostly interested in... They're mostly interested in promoting this idea of themselves being in a position within a within a lineage and this, this, that's a difficult and critical thing to talk about but um, it has to be talked about because it's very important to emphasize to people that that's the wrong way you know so so to understand this discussed ideas around training on your own you have to understand that they've deviated and gone the wrong way so it, it, in many ways you're in a much better position training on your own if, if you avoid all of this um, you're freer. You're able to experiment more. You're not you're not um, captured within these um, systems of you know like kind of um, crystallizing orthodoxy that you have to think in a certain way. A lot of some of these people have got people dressed in the same way, um, moving the same way. Everything's the same. Thinking the same way. And you know we've known for centuries that you know once you get in fact. Um, uh, Confucius talks about something very similar, like, you know, you get people moving the same way, you get people dressing the same way. Once you get people behaving in a certain way, you can get them thinking in a certain way and everyone thinking the same. You're better off without that. You're better off being free, better off being liberated, um, which, which is the whole idea. So what I'm going to say is those, those people who emphasise lineage, for, for the most part, for, for the most part, that's direct. The more they emphasise lineage and who their teachers were, the the less practical ability they have in reality. Um, really, it's not it's not brain surgery, is it, to understand that to to work out that that's right? It's just like a change of perception, isn't it? Like like all this time we've been made to think like you know you buy into this you know there's this kind of orthodox thing and it's a bit like you know, maybe a bit like going to university or something like that. But, but I mean, you know, I've, you know, I'm a university lecturer, I've got a PhD. 
Um, so I'm telling you, it's not like that. You know, like a university system is very different where there's, there's much stricter rules in terms of the training that people have gone through to get a PhD and so on. Um, and there's also significant peer review based around professional standards. So if, I mean, this is a very common thing that I could, I, I could talk about another time, I suppose, people saying like, um, each one's like the PhD of martial arts, right? That's, that's nonsense in multiple different ways, but one of the ways it's nonsense is that if it, if it really was, then you would be subject to peer review based on professional standards, which in each one would be your ability to actually do something practical, to be able to put the gloves on and spar, or if you want to be obnoxious about it, there's, there's bare knuckle boxing leagues with, with no rules, so you can go and do that as well if you want to talk about, you know, like um, your, your badassness cannot be limited by gloves and stuff like that. Um, so you actually couldn't get away with that if, if universities were were each one, you know, if, if, if each one really was like PhD level and um, postgraduate level study in martial arts, you just couldn't get away with that. You'd, you'd, you'd have to be able to demonstrate that you could live up to professional standards set by professional bodies and it wouldn't be who was your teacher, like, um, like, 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 like like on a CV or something like that, it plays a minimal role. Like if you've got a PhD and you're applying for an academic job, who was your, who was your, um, like, like who, who examined you for your PhD can play a role. Or if your teacher was very, very famous, that can maybe, but very famous teachers have a lot of students and very famous each one teachers have a lot of students as well. There's no guarantee whatsoever for, for quality. So I think in many ways you, you're actually worse off like everyone's worried, so you know, this, this situation where you're on your own and you're thinking, well, I really, I'm really, for whatever reason, I'm really interested in each one and that's great and we want to promote that. Um, but there's no one around who can who can teach me each one, so what do I do? And you go online and then you just, you, you get in constantly, mentally bombarded with this idea that, you know, you've got to belong to this orthodox and people really parading it like I am the whatever generation of whatever from whoever and um so so let, let's let's think about some 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 brass tacks around that from from um from Wang Sheng Jai's perspective first of all so uh there's been considerable amount of revisionism around this and this is another problem so these people who emphasize, who are really emphasizing this idea of lineage and orthodox transmission of, well, I'm not sure what it is that they author, they've been orthodoxly transmitted because um, you can just go on, online and see that none of them can spar and none of them can hit with power. So um, prove me wrong, you know, like, let's, let's see some videos, prove me wrong. There's, there's a couple, you know, one or two, but other than that. And there's quite a lot of people teaching, you know, outside of China and, and I'm not talking about people who are keeping a low profile, by the way. You know, you've got nothing to prove to anyone if you're just keeping a low profile and training. You know, I was for years. Um, but the moment I go on social media, you know, the moment I start going on social media and talking about each one theory and ideas, like it's a matter of honour to, to demonstrate that I can actually do that in practice, you know, at least to some degree. You know, and some degree is better than no degree, which is like... Um, See, we can't really talk about these things. I know it's harsh. Wang Shen Jai said, try not to speak harshly about people, and even though he did. Um, but I think he'd just be appalled if he saw what had happened in each one now. And this, this, you know, of all people, he said, don't talk about the theory if you can't demonstrate it. And also, don't, don't talk about it from behind closed doors, i.e., if you're talking about it publicly, you've got to demonstrate it publicly. So these, um, they're like also, you know, a lot of like fake thuggery where people will say, they'll talk about it online to hundreds and thousands of people. But if it's questioned, they'll say, um, so I got, I got one idiot, um, you know, who's, who's basically threatening me when he meets me in the future, he's gonna, he's gonna beat me up. You know, so you've got you've got idiots threatening to beat people up. You know, come around and I'll beat you up. And I'll, no, Wang Shen Jai said, if he's talking about it, you've got to demonstrate it so that people can see. And you, it's up to you to demonstrate it, not to threaten people. Get the gloves on and get sparring with your students. Um, s s stop bullshitting people. Sick of it. 
So we've also got some serious revisionism going on, i.e. people going back and changing history. So um, lying about what Wang Shanghai said, um, dissembling, um, in some cases manipulating translations to, to alter the context of what Wang Shanghai is saying. Uh, so, so let's be absolutely clear about some things, right? First of all, Wang Shanghai abolished the master-disciple relationship, right? He abolished it. And the amount of people who are like orthodox Yichuan teachers who say that's not true is unbelievable. The, the, the revisionism around this is unbelievable. You can just go and read it yourself and um, it's not that difficult to get a, a, a decent translation. Just just like, um, you know, the Google's translate will give you the, the translation that will give you the gist. Um, or, or you can get it translated properly, or if you speak Chinese, read Chinese, you can go and read it yourself directly. Or you can read translations of, of other things. So Yu Yongnyan, for example, talks about this and he explains how Wang Shanjai considered the master-disciple relationship to be a form of slavery. Um, and he despised it. He absolutely despised it. Um, Wang Shanjai himself um, ab absolutely demolishes this idea of the master-disciple relationship. He says it's one of the things that's most responsible for degeneration in Chinese wushu. And, and also he despised the, the way that it, the, um, A, kind of encouraged people to keep secrets. And, and he criticizes that and says, well, you know, you know, what secrets can they really be keeping if they need this, this BS, you know, this BS lineage thing. He said that it creates a, a power relationship with students and teachers that makes it incredibly difficult then to talk about like the fine grained details, the nitty gritty of fight training. And also it reverses the it reverses the relationship. So we start thinking particularly later on about the idea of a coaching relationship and how different that is. And that's something that um, you know needs to be taken and run and developed and um, uh, like in a disciple, master disciple relationship, like all the focus and worship is up onto the, the teacher, but in a coaching relationship, the, all the focus is on the is on the student, so is on the athlete, not even student, athlete. All the focus is on the athlete, and even that change of context to discussing someone as a as an athlete rather than a student also changes the context like the, the athlete is expected to achieve something not just be have something downloaded into them it puts all the focus on the athlete and he also but then you but now we've got people and I've, and, I, and I've seen them doing it so um you know people from so-called orthodox lineages and particularly people from it's not just it's not just yao's lineage um, but they tend to be, in, in my, maybe just because there's more of them. I think it's just because there's more of them. Um, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about people in China. I'm talking about there's a certain dynamic I think about people who are from outside of China who've gone to China and become part of this. And um, not in every case, but most of these people now that I've encountered have been like the worst possible, most horrible, obnoxious, insulting people um, for no apparent reason because I've yet to see one of them that's actually capable of doing anything closely related to actual practical each one or, or fighting or martial arts of any kind so I mean answers on a postcard please and I'm sorry it needs saying this is um, you know how long can it go on for just like each one will be dead shortly if, if, if that if that just goes on so I, I, I've seen, like I saw a discussion online and, and someone was pointing out that Wang Shanghai abolished the master disciple system and, and, and an, a Yao's Ichiman instructor was saying, no, that's not true. And it's like, you can just go and read it yourself. It's an empirical fact. Um, and then you've got people jumping through hoops to revise all of this in their mind and people saying, well, you know, um, Wang Shanghai just said that because of communism and stuff like that. It's just, come on. Um, where, where does that end? You know, where, like the entire Ichiwan revolution just falls apart, doesn't it? If you start talking about like Wang Shenzhai didn't really mean this. And what he really meant was to support all the old bullshit. The, obviously, the whole point of Wang Shenzhai is he doesn't go along with all the old bullshit. If you revise that and reverse it to, oh, no, really, he meant 
all the old bullshit. Well, there's no each one, is there? There's no point to any of it. So, so you've got people saying things like, well, Yao Zongzun, um, you know, was was the appointed decide, you know, the appointed lineage holder of of each one. And actually, that's not it's not clear that that's true in that in that sense, or that it that it happened like that. Um, Number one, like like disciples, a very misleading term. Like Wang Shengzhi despised that idea of masters and disciples, but also he, he, you know, he was teaching over a very long time, and his ideas evolved over a long time. So he may well have used that concept in, in, earlier on, and then later on, it's just in the nature of his revolutionary way of thinking that he stopped thinking about all of these things, and particularly, this is the most important thing, he, he thinks about them in the context of how do you improve level. And then Yao Zongzun takes this idea and really runs with it, you know. Um, how, how do we interpret all of these ideas from the past, given all these competing ways of thinking? Ah, you just take those interpretations that lead to higher level, and you just park everything else. So he sees that, you know, this so-called master-disciple relationship doesn't, doesn't lead to higher level. Oh, there's something else he hated about it as well, um, which I think is really interesting in terms of the modern world and, you know, like modernising our ways of thinking. He talks about prejudiced and superstitious beliefs um, that teachers hold that influence who they will teach. And that's interesting, isn't it? Like, like think about that, how that applies now. Like, um, like he doesn't give any details, but you no, know, you can apply that to a lot of things, can't you? Like social categories of people that are marginalised, that there's prejudice against. How forward thinking is that, you know, prejudiced and stupid beliefs from the past that stop people from teaching certain certain kinds of people. Um, think, I think one of the categories he's certainly thinking about is women. Because um, at, at, at one time women weren't allowed to do weren't allowed to do standing. So 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 I've read anyway. Um, but yeah, so so for various reasons. And anyone who watches my videos or even sees me move, I suppose, like you know, can see like like Yao Zongzun is the most profound, you know, next to Wang Shanghai, Yao Zongzun is the most profound influence on my training. Um, but this doesn't mean, I mean, my background's in, you know, um, well, I've got a, a broad Wushu background, but in terms of Yichuan, Yao's Yichuan, but I don't, you know, I, I, I don't buy into that anymore. I want to I wanna end all of that, like, lineages and schools and things like that, which is supposed to be what I'm talking about. But the situation isn't isn't really like that. That that, that Wang Shanghai appointed Yao Zongzun as some kind of um, lineage holding successor. That's part of the structure of things that that were in the past that he wanted to get rid of. What what actually happened? And, and Wang Shanghai talked about it himself. He said like, um, you know, each one's one family while I'm alive. But what, when I'm dead, it'll fracture into multiple different factions. You know. Um, which is exactly what has happened, and not positively. So there was there was an issue when after Wang Shanghai died of, and it's and it's the same issue now really of like it's all kinds of bullshit. And how do you just start somehow? How how do you find this balance between like sending all this information out there that can liberate people and can radically help their progression, but at the same time holding off? holding off the bullshit um, and I can just go online now and I can look up countless videos of people who claim to be the real each one um, showing um, demonstrating stuff that is just nonsense that's just magic powers I was just reading someone online in a group just posted in the past couple of days some really obnoxious again incredibly obnoxious insulting just some from from Han's lineage each one Incredibly obnoxious, insulting to beginners, questions, uh, pompous nonsense, uh, pseudo theory. And then when I went and looked him up, he's got the first thing I see is like um, one of his students has got their hands out like this and he hits them like this and the student jumps up in there. It's just bullshit. Um, they, we've just been gaslighted by these people. Gaslighted, that's the bottom line. How do you, how do you cut all that bullshit out when they're gaslighting you that they're the orthodox lineage? So... Um, th there was an attempt, you know, there was an attempt when Wang Shenzhai died to say, well, hold on, these are like the kind of orthodox successors and um, Yao Zongzun was very creative, you know, and he'd been trusted by Wang Shenzhai to take over um, a lot of the teaching. Um, 
you know, there's no, there's, there's no doubt that teachers have like, you know, particular kind, particular students, usually more than one student who, who are like your, you know, your best students um, that you entrust stuff with. So that was kind of emphasised, um, you know, and there's all this stuff about Yao Zonzun's disciple name, you know, like it indicates that, you know, wants uh, Yao Zonzun to carry on the legacy and all that. And um, all these things are like kind of informal goodwill things that, that happen when there's, a, when there's a really healthy, wholesome relationship between a teacher and a student, you get these kind of things. Um, but then, then in that aftermath, in that aftermath, there had to be some kind of re-emphasis of, oh, hold on a minute, you've got all people claiming all kinds of things and, in, and all kinds of, of BS and just step by step that's got out of hand um, is, is, is the reality. It's just got out of hand and it's become like this kind of feudal, feudal system as if you can inherit level. Um, and I think, I'm not religious, you know, but the, the, there's a parallel here between the rep this and the Reformation. So it's a bit like, you know, the Catholic Church having this feudal system that it's integrated with and um, people, you know, people in the church saying the only way you can have a relationship with God is through the structures of the church and being initiated into all its rights and all that. And um, then the Protestant Reformation comes along and says, well, hold on, that's all BS and you can have a, an independent relationship with God just by following the, the teaching. I think uh, we're at a very similar point, I think, in each one where, where, where that Reformation is really happening. And it's kind of my dream that that will, you know, you know really take off. This, this idea of these feudal systems that you have to be part of. Um, like, on the one hand, that hasn't by any means helps in the long run to cut out the bullshit. There's, there's more bullshit than ever. There's more bullshit in each one than there is in anything else. Um, it's the very home of bullshit. Uh, and, and also not just woo-woo bullshit. So this, this idea about woo-woo magic powers and the focus on that, very often that detracts from the fact that lots of people who aren't pretending to have woo-woo magic powers, nevertheless still can't fight. Um, nevertheless still have no practical ability or if they have they certainly don't demonstrate it in any way that matches their hubris and arrogance and the stuff that they talk about and put online so all of this feudal this feudal nonsense which i despised it um so did yu yong yan so did zhao dao zin you know he talks about this idea of um uh Go going and and you know doing a baishi ceremony. Also, one Chang Chai abolished the baishi ceremony, but what Zhao Daozin says, you know, how stupid is that? Like you go to a coach and you and, and you, you swear some kind of oath and you're bound to them and they turn out to be a wrongan, you know, and they turn out to be a swindler, or they just you know, other people come along who are better, you know, you need a different coach or um, and he says just just kick him in the touch, right? Just kick him in the touch. And 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 Zhao Daozin also um, really, really attacks this kind of teacher-student relationship and says, like, again, emphasises Wang Shanjai's ideas about it being a kind of slave relationship and says, well, there's got to be a limit. Like, of course, you've got to respect the coach, right? You, you know, because you can't have a working relationship otherwise if you're not respecting the coach. There's no point. But the coach shouldn't be like an overbearing parent who's, like, getting involved in your life and all this and telling you how to think about... Uh, that's not just an issue with... Um, with, with each one, you know, like, it's, a, it's a particular issue with like, like anyone who starts getting a following. But you know, there's a few people who teach MMA and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu whose video output, you know, on social media is now very much moving into that territory of telling people how to think politically, often quite right wing politically, telling people, you know, what they should think about social issues and all kinds of stuff. So it's a problem in any group, but it's a particular problem of thinking if you've bought into something that's almost cult-like, which is what Zhao Daozin is talking about. So, so Wang Shanjai abolished the Baishi ceremony. This is a ceremony where you get on your knees and kowtow. And I have to say, right, you know, um, well, well, there's two things like, if, like, you know, I don't, I don't do, um, I, I don't do commercial teaching. So if someone trains with me, like seriously, I you know I, I accept people formally as students usually after a year of training, and that's like not just like once a week at a church or like intensive proper training. 
Um, and I do have to like, like to, to just to mark the moment that, that where I'm saying, okay, I, I will commit to training you and you will commit to training. We just have that where, you know, they'll pass me a cup of tea. Like I quite like that. But this thing where you get on your knees, I know it's quite cultural and some cultures doesn't have the same connotation you know, doing a kowtow, doing a full bow at shoulders respect, and I recognise the anthropological differences. Um, and, and Wang Xingzai also didn't like it and saw it in those terms as like a kind of slavery, getting on your knees and grovelling. I'd have to have a gun at the back of my head before I did that with anyone, I have to say. Um, and so Wang Xingzai abolished it, and then people brought it back. And then I've got... Uh, uh, I've got to read people, I've seen people reading and arguing with other people saying like, you know, someone saying like, yeah, but, but, you know, the, the Yao brothers do it and Sui Ri Bin does it and all. Yeah, they brought it back. They brought it back. And, and um, actually, like, what, like Yao Zongzong didn't even do it. Like, you, you just have you do three bows and then that would accept you. And, and I think that is useful to have a, a marker point that says like, can you, commit to being a student and I'll commit to being a teacher because um, then you can look back and say well hold on a minute you know you make this big commitment and I've made this big commitment and we don't want to just throw that away but Wang Shang Jai says you know you can bow a thousand times but what does it matter like what does it matter it doesn't mean anything what, what if it turns out the teacher's no good it doesn't matter how many times times you bow so we just got rid of it we just got rid of it all and they brought it back you know um and now you've got people's. So I've read one particularly very famous Yao's Yichuan instructor deliberately dissembling, deliberately misleading, and manipulating the historical facts by saying that Wang Shanjai wanted to modify the disciple system um, and, and writing a big thing about it, which is all just basically lies, saying that. Um, implying that the, that the disciple system is an essential part of. Of each one and Wang Shanjai wanted that, he just wanted it to be kind of modernized a bit. That's not true at all. We want to abolish it completely. And this person also says, by the way, that you can only learn each one from you know, like from being part of a um an orthodox lineage. That person also, of course, hasn't got got lots of videos out, hasn't got one showing any kind of practical ability whatsoever. So, you know, in terms of actual demonstrable fight practice ability none absolutely none so what is it that you are buying into when you buy into that and wasn't Wang Shanjai right about it? it's all meaningless you can get on your knees and grovel to that person what what are you going to learn just to go on the internet and be arrogant and insulting to other people yes so the answer is yes you can learn on your own and and, and in many ways you're better off so so what a good what a good teacher does isn't teach you so Something else that's really important that, that Yao Zongzun talks about, and it's the idea that you can't steal each one. This is a, you know, it's an old Wushu saying, like, you know, that you have to steal Wushu. You know, you see a teacher doing something and you copy the moves and um, you can't wait to be taught everything. Um, you'll never get anywhere. You know, you've got to take responsibility for yourself and kind of, um, you've got to steal it. You know, you've got to, uh, remember my own coach, using this this term about each one, like I stole this from I stole this from my master, you know. And Yao Zongzun says, like with each one you can't do that. And he goes on then to explain that this is experiential, this is something that you unfold. So it also means that actually this is the total opposite of what these people are saying. Actually, not only not only can you learn on your own, you can only learn on your own. You can only teach yourself. Um, what, what a good teacher does is save you time. So, yes, you're developing intuitively. So you can you can only unfold it what it is that you're looking for. But you can do that on your own. Um, but it's going to take it's going to take time, and it's going to be trial and error. And maybe there won't be enough time. That's the that's the bottom line. A lot depends on talent, creativity. Um, the, the way you think, you know, are you a creative, incisive thinker, critical thinker, able to proactively kind of engage what you're doing? Um, and a good teacher can save you loads and loads of time. And I remember when I was starting to talk about the idea of maybe setting up a channel and making videos and my senior students saying, well, yeah, but the one thing you can't do is, is do this kind of intensive one-on-one -on -one training 
that I do with a student, you know, like, and, and I know that, and I know how valuable it is to do that. Um, but I also know, like, well, I believe, you know, like, like no, I know that the vast majority of what you need is stuff that you develop on your own, that you, your teacher can give you pointers, and if you've got really good one-on-one -on -one teach, teaching, they can save you loads and loads of time just by adjusting things. But you can do a lot through just trial and error, intuitive development. In many ways, you're better off. You're better off doing that. It's like, imagine, I mean, Zhao Gaozin uses this example. He says, imagine a, a Wushu school that's full of all theory and talking about the best fighting methods and they're just endlessly talking about this and lecturing everyone else, but not one of them can show any practical practical actual ability like what would you call that school you know um and and the interviewer who's answering answering him says um, i'd call them like charlatans but but my answer would be i'd call that school each one <laughs> now because that's pretty much it isn't it like that's that's the orthodoxy that that, that, that you're dealing with that's saying you need to train with with a teacher and so on I'm not saying it's everyone but um it's almost everyone, I would say, in, in certainly in Europe, North America, um, almost everyone. So, yeah, so what really matters is how many pointers you need. So, like, there's, there's so much information there about on, you know, in, on the Internet. And also, I think, let, let's talk about some other things that are quite interesting, right? So, of all people, you know, who've done correspondence courses, videos, correspondence magazines, is the Yao Brothers. You know, they've done tons and tons of that stuff and yet it's always like the western students of either the Yao brothers or some some other of um Yao Zong Zong students they're always the ones who are saying you can't learn like that so what's what's the deal there um why why make those correspondence course videos and let's talk about those people a little bit and um, the importance of their certificates and so-called lineages and um uh, the the, on, the only thing like I'm not saying like um, a treasured relationship with a with a, a you know a teacher in a wholesome relationship. I'm not saying that's 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 worthless or anything like that. No, that's that's an amazing thing if you can if you can find that real that real thing. In most cases, we're not we're not talking about that. When we're talking about lineage, we're talking about people who can't do anything practically, who are nevertheless using the idea of who their teacher was to. Um, to get around that, you know, do you know who I am kind of thing. Um, and then we've, then we've got people talking about certificates. In some cases we've got, you know, we know for a fact that there's certain famous each one teachers who you could buy a discipleship with. And um, I just saw the other day, I thought, you know, someone insisting like, do you know who I am kind of nonsense. And then a photo of him, a disciple photo with a teacher who is notorious for selling discipleships it's absolutely meaningless then you've got a lot of other people who um you know really out of goodwill out of goodwill um and also goodwill and also money um you know a bottom line is you know people paying money to be disciples it might be structured in such a way that makes it look like it's not <laughs> paying for a discipleship but that's how things are done um, and I don't blame people in, in many ways for doing that you know because you, you're not you're not talking about um, you know entering some like people have this this vision of Wushu as being this like really spiritual thing and it's one of the things that it, it attracts people to it until later and you realize that, that, that what that is that what that feeling is what that thing that's attracting you to it is is just, just the idea that there's something beyond the ordinary, and that what is Wushu at the end of the day? It's something that lifts people beyond being ordinary, and that is a wonderful, amazing thing. Um, but you know, you're dealing with people who otherwise would be on the absolute bones of their arse. You know, people who are running a business. It's, it's a business, and if you're prepared to go to China for a month, you're prepared to splash out a few grand, go to China. Um, do a bit of training and then you know you, a gift you pay for the training and you get you know maybe you go two or three times and you get a fancy certificate and blah 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 
right? Okay, if that's your thing, you know, you get on your knees and you bow and you get your certificate and, you know, and everyone's happy. Um, but then, then you come back to Europe and you start, like, giving it the large one about, you know, your awesomeness based on, like, you're the authentic disciple of, of, of such a body. And then you got these people who are like, you know, I travelled all over China seeking out the blah, 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 the true masters and all this, and I am the true seeker. And, uh, yeah, so did Gao Chen. You know, Gao Chen went all over China um, training with different students of Wang Shangjai, and Gao Chen's awesome. You know, um, Gao Chen's level is like, he's one of the only people I really rate. Um, it's not. It, it, it's an awesome level from another age, you know, like each one has to constantly update in terms of what's going on, like in terms of MMA and stuff like that. But from that from that age, in terms of the core physical movement skills of each one, Gal Shen's like apex, you know, for me, he's like top level. And he doesn't do that, doesn't do all that stuff about, do you know who I am? It just shows you. Um, actual ability and these people don't so you know you can do that calculation yourself so those certificates are meaningless it's like when people say uh, oh there's, there's also you know there's also a goodwill thing it's not always just like that there's also goodwill um where you've got a student maybe who's from the west who maybe isn't that great you know um so then there's this other thing of um you know it's not it's not always just about money in that sense there's, there's this kind of goodwill thing that people generally want to promote Chinese martial arts, so you've got people coming over from the West and training, and it's an opportunity to spread the message overseas. So, you know, that those people might not necessarily be the best, you know, at the actual thing that they're, they're supposedly learning, um, but nevertheless, they can take the message overseas and they can set up, a, you know, they can set up schools overseas and promote, they can bring people over from China then and they can bring people to China and, you know, it's, it's involved with money, but it's also involved with promotion and I'm not saying it's, you know, it's bad to in, intersect those two things necessarily. Um, you know, people have got to make a living. But again, that, 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 again, that, that gets corrupted into, um, like it becomes instead of ability. So if... The amount, when someone says, for example, that they're, you know, in terms of Tai Chi, when they're a, a disciple of Chen Zhengwei or Chen Zhao Wang, I just roll my eyes, really, like, because, like, who isn't, you know, like, it's, um, it's, it's like a, it's something that's kind of honorary in many ways, like a kindness to some people, then gets just transformed into, like, some kind of, you know, do you know who I am bullshit. So you're better off, you're better off outside all of that. So, so what I'm saying there is like, you know, this, this, this worry, this concern about being part of like an orthodox lineage or something like that. Don't even worry about it. You're better off out of it. Um, if, 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 you, if you're lucky enough to find someone who's a good teacher who can save you a lot of time, that's great. But otherwise, just persevere. Um, unfold it, you know, just start with your standing. Start... There's, there's so much material online, really. What what do you need to teach you for, you know, like to, to show you the basics to get you started? Okay, you might not have that, you know, someone's adjusting your arm this way and that way, but if you are conscientious, you know, and start noticing these things and you do your reading and stuff like that, you think about it, you know, you really engage it consciously, you proceed via intuition. Again, you know, like all these people saying, you, you, you must learn from... You must learn from this orthodox lineage. Yeah, well, there's Wang Shangjai saying all the time, like, you you must proceed via intuition. So those thing, those two things don't marry up. So in, in the revolution, in the reformation that we want, what we want is to break free from all of that. And then maybe each one actually has a hope. Like, I used to think in terms of, um, well, like, because I've been in seclusion through a very long time, just training, and I don't know all this nonsense is going on and the moment I like start communicating with these people and I reach this wall of hostility and, you know and I, and I start start like having a bit of in, interaction with these people and like 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 exactly with Wang Shengjai it's the same thing like the, the moment that you show you can actually start actually do stuff practically then they they turn you know then then you see the horribleness of it because that's the thing they fear most of all because they can't do anything um 
it, it exposes all the bullshit and the lies and then that's when you start seeing them like getting very insulted and insisting on all this do you know who I am nonsense and talking about meaningless theory and um, everyone else is rubbish and blah 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 and, um, and endless arguments about who's waving their arms in the air in the, the most orthodox way. Yao's, Yao's people are the worst but I think that's just because there's more of them you know I'm not talking about people in China I'm talking about people who've gone to China and then come out of China. And so there's this barrier. So in, in, in many cases, like I, I, I think like um, if, if their they're teachers in China, the people they're saying are their teachers in China knew what they were saying and the way they were behaving, I think they'd be horrified. It's just, it's got to be talked about because if we don't have this revolution, if we don't have this reformation, in fact, I only have, I only have hope in the future of each one because of people who want to train on their own because of people who can't get access to these to these lineages so called that's why we should have faith that there is a possibility um, it should be more like something like break dancing you know yeah you can go you can go to a class and learn the basics but if you want to be like a great break dancer all of that's done intuitively on your own you know and sharing and in a positive community and if we've got loads of people kind of working on their own then, then we break that bullshit. We break that feudal bullshit. We break it. And then people will communicate with one another in a better way, in, in a healthier way, and they can learn from one another and we can proceed and we can break that nonsense. So um, that's, that, that's my hope and that's, that's my answer. Yes, of course you can learn on your own. Um, in many ways you'll be better off. And there's plenty of stuff, there's plenty of stuff online to just get people going and just learn. And and most of the fight, like like in terms of fight application, if you can get the core movement skills, then in terms of fight application, like that's always been upgraded anyway. So there's all kinds of martial arts teachers and MMA clubs and stuff like that, where, you know, if you're really serious in each one, you should be really serious about fight training. And there's all kinds of people who can teach you that. You just need to incorporate it. And really that's how you should develop the dialectical interaction of the, the, the quintessence movement skills and the fight training that's always upgrading. Quintessence movement skills are ancient. The, the, the fight upgrades are constant. Um, so yeah, go for it. Go for it. You know what? Stop worrying about these people and stop worrying about that you haven't got a teacher and stuff like that. And who cares what they say? You know, I just, I just, what, I was just reading in a, an internet thread just like this, where some, some, uh, you know, someone's a beginner showing their, you know, what they're doing, um, and, and and all these people jump on it and say, oh, that's not real, and that's, you know, like, just endless arguments about who's moving their arms about in the air in the right way. Like, <laughs> who cares? Let's just bypass all of that. Get down to serious fight training based on each one principles. Go for it. Go for it.